me on. Good morning, everyone. All right, can I get a big wave and a cheer from Ace Academy? And a big wave and a cheer from Learn Charter. Awesome. Good morning. My name is Sylvia, and I work at the New England Aquarium all the way in Boston. So greetings from Boston. And we're here today to talk about carbon and carbon dioxide. Has anyone heard of carbon dioxide? Give a thumbs up if you've heard of it. All right, or just raise your hand. Awesome, we've got a few. All right, is there somebody who can tell me something they know about carbon dioxide? All right, I'm seeing maybe some hands at uh, Learn Charter. It is a type of gas, absolutely, so it's in our air. Does anyone else know something about carbon dioxide? Maybe someone from Ace Academy. I'd like everyone to take a deep breath in and then blow out. You all just made carbon dioxide. We breathe it out. Does anyone know what takes it in after we breathe it out? There's something living out there that takes it in? I'm seeing some hands at Ace Academy. Trees. 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 Absolutely. Green and growing things take in our carbon dioxide that I breathe out. Does anyone know another place that we make carbon dioxide besides just breathing it out? Where else does it come from? Come from? It looks like I'm seeing some more hands at Ace Academy. You guys want to give it a shot? From cars, yeah, from burning gas and oil and other fossil fuels. So today we're going to be using two words that might be a little bit new for you. We're going to be talking about a sink and a source. So talking about your kitchen sink or your bathroom sink. I'm talking about something that sinks carbon dioxide and takes it in. And then a source would be something that gives it out. Now, do you folks have some pictures that we sent you? If not, I've got them right in front of me, too. <laughs> All right. So I've got a whole bunch of things here. I'll show you each one. And your challenge is that you're going to choose some things that you think might be a carbon dioxide sink, something that's going to take it out of the air, out of the air, and sink it down, and something you think might be a source, something that's going to give it off out to the atmosphere. Sound good? All right. So I'm going to show you a few things, and you're going to get to choose. So how about, now I think these might show up backwards to you but you can still tell kind of from the picture. We've got forests. What do you think? Carbon sink or carbon source? Think about it for a second. And then if you think it's going to be a sink, I want you to raise your hand. All right, looks like we've got pretty unanimous decision on that one. So I'm going to hang this over here on the carbon sink side. All right, how about a car? What do you think? Cars? Cars. Source. All right, we've got a pretty good vote for that. So we've got a source side over here. All right, so we've got two. We have to choose four more, two sinks and two sources. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some, and I don't want you to answer right away. I want you to talk to each other for a second and see what you think. I've got the ocean. I've got electric power, how we make electric, electric, electricity. I've got volcanoes. I've got cargo ships. I've got algae, which is seaweed, 
something we talk about a lot at the aquarium. Got livestock, which is cows and pigs and things like that. <laughs> yeah, I was getting a giggle. I've got soil, just plain old dirt. And I've got rivers and lakes. So now, as a group, we've chosen one sink, our forests, and one source, our cars. I want Ace Academy to choose one sink and one source, and Learn Charter to choose one sink and one source from that list. I'm going to give you folks a few seconds to talk amongst yourselves, all right? All right, do you have your answers? Have you agreed on something? Yeah. Yeah? All right. Learn Charter, what are your two things you chose? Soil is which one? Ship. Oh, you said ship. Sorry, cargo ship. Okay, and cargo ship goes on which side? Source. Source. Fantastic. All right, let's put that on there. We'll see what we see. All right, and what sink did you choose? Soil. Soil. All right. Take a look at that. All right. Ace Academy, over to you. Electric power generation? Yeah. Which one is that? Source. Source, okay. And what's your other answer? Algae. Algae, and that is a? Think. Think, all right. So we have, on this side, we have our forests our soil, and our algae. And on this side, we have electric power generation, cargo ships, and cars. Does that sound good? Shall we test yeah. it? All right, I'm going to take this off, and our sources are going to go up, and our sinks are going to go down. All right. So you were absolutely right. But did they all go up the same amount and all go down the same amount? No. No. So let's take a look here. Which one is the biggest source? These three, which one went up highest? Electric Yeah, electric power. So this is a huge source of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere, is how we make our electricity. How about the sinkiest sink, the one that went down the lowest? Which one's that? Forest. forest, yeah. The three we chose, the forest is the biggest sink. What are where are some of the largest sinks in our some of the largest forests in our world? Rainforest. Rainforest, absolutely. So we've got this. I, I have to no, know this is our biggest uh, source here. We got our ele electric power generation. We've got also what's the second one here? Cars. So a lot of these sources of carbon dioxide are things that we have to do with directly, right? These three, electric power generation, cargo ships, and cars. Now, can we make more algae or soil or forests? We can kind of make more forests. We can plant trees, right? And we can make sure they're nice and healthy. Now, soil is an interesting one. It ended up being almost exactly flat. It didn't go up or down. So what does that make it? Anyone have an idea? It's a confusing one. Soil is kind of interesting. When soil forms, when it put, puts itself together, it's a sink. It absorbs carbon dioxide. But when we disturb it, when we're moving things around, or if we cut down the trees that are holding that soil together, it releases it back. So it's kind of always cycling that carbon dioxide through. 
So it's both a sink and a source, depending on what's going on. How about algae? Where is the most algae in the world? What kind of water? Fresh water. There, there is a lot of algae in fresh water, but is most of our planet covered in fresh water or salt water? Salt water. Salt water, yeah. And actually, most of the algae is out there in the ocean. In fact, about half of all the air we breathe every day is made by our friends, the algae. Take a deep breath. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks, an algae. <laughs> for that deep breath. So we've got our three sources and our three sinks. Has anyone heard anything else about carbon dioxide, or sometimes it's called a greenhouse gas, that has anything to do with any affecting anything on our planet? Yeah, we usually hear this term, global warming. We have a slightly different way we talk about it here at the aquarium. We talk about the carbon dioxide blanket. Now, you and I probably like our blankets, right? Who has a favorite blanket? Raise your hand. Yeah, I definitely have a favorite blanket. But when I'm snuggled under that blanket, if I get too hot, what do you do if you get too hot under your blanket? You take it off or you stick your foot out from underneath, right? Well, carbon dioxide, like what's coming from how we make our electricity, and how we burn fossil fuels, like in cars and cargo ships and things like that, as it goes out into our air and into our atmosphere, it makes the atmosphere act like a blanket. That's its job, right? The atmosphere, that's its job. If we didn't have an atmosphere, we would have no life on Earth. But carbon dioxide makes that atmosphere a little bit thicker, a little bit denser, a little bit of a heavier blanket. Now, if our planet starts to get a little too warm under its nice warm carbon dioxide blanket, can it stick its foot out? Can it take its blanket off? No. Do we want it to take its blanket off? No, of course not. It's what's supporting life on our planet. And that's where we get the effect of climate change, or sometimes termed global warming, or just global change. We're seeing things be a little warmer all over the planet. This year, we've noticed some big changes in our weather, but that's just year-to-year -year weather. We're talking about big, long spans of time with change happening. So this is something a lot of people are thinking about. How can we live our lives in ways that don't produce quite so many of these things that add to that blanket? And maybe that actually help out with some of these things that take care of some of that blanket. So can anybody think of any ideas of things we can do to not be producing as much carbon dioxide over here with our electricity or our cargo ships or our cars? Can we think of anything either you can do or we can do as a society? Can anybody raise your hand with an idea? Great, I'm seeing some hands in both places. Let's start with Learn Charter. What are some of your ideas? Less driving. Less driving. Less driving, great. So I live in Boston. It's a city that has a really good subway system. So it's a lot easier for people in Boston to do less driving. Are there really good subway and bus systems everywhere? No, not really. So we, as a society, can do more to make sure that there's more buses and things like that. But also, as individuals, who here can walk to school? Some people walk to school, fantastic. Some people live too far away to walk to school. I know I can't walk to work. It's a little too far for me. But I'm lucky. I can take the subway. Are there other places that you can walk? Can you walk to the grocery store? Yes. Yeah. And if it's a nice day out, that might be a nice thing to do anyhow with your family, right? Yes. Yes. What else can we do about these these three things here? We've got our cars, our cargo ships, and our electricity. What else can we do? How about Ace Academy? We heard from Learn Charter before. How about Ace Academy? Oh, Sounds like we got a couple different ideas. Couldn't I get somebody to repeat one of those? Was it was a little bit broken up? Carpool. 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 
Carpool, absolutely. So if you're going to a game or a play or a movie and you're going to meet your friends there anyway, maybe you can pick them up on the way. You can all carpool together. Or if your parents work someplace and there's someone near them who works at the same place or in the same area, maybe they can carpool their cars. And in a lot of places, if you're in a carpool, you get to go a little faster on the highway too, which means you get to work a little bit faster or to wherever you're going. Great. Are there any ideas about electricity? Are there things you can do to use a little less electricity at home? Good. See some hands in both places. Let's hear from uh, Let's hear from Ace Academy this time. Sun power, so we can look at other sources of electricity, right? Like sun and wind and things like that. So we can still use our electricity, but not be using it in a way that generates quite too much carbon dioxide. Great. Does anyone have a solar panel anywhere near them? Like on their home or their school or a store near them? There's a few solar panels out there. Fantastic. Does anyone have any wind turbines near them? Are you getting wind power in your area? Yeah, there's a lot more of those, depending on where you are. We've got quite a few in the Boston area that are going in. They're pretty cool. There's a couple different designs of them, too. Anyone here ever want to be an engineer? Anybody out there want to be a scientist or an engineer? There are some really cool things we can develop that can help us to use some of these types of technology better. In fact, I've got a really cool story about wind energy and an animal that's near and dear to my heart. Who here likes whales? <laughs> Biggest animals in the ocean, right? Who likes to learn about whales? How about learning from whales? So it turns out the humpback whale has these cool bumps along the front of its flippers that help it to swim faster through the water. And a scientist took a look at that shape and to look at, took a look at the wind turbines, the windmills in this area, and thought, I bet you if I put some bumps in the front of those wind turbine blades, I can make a better wind turbine. And it's true. By taking a look at how the whale moves through the water, we can learn better how the wind turbine can move through the air and can actually get more electricity from it. It's a pretty cool thing. We can learn from the other animals on this planet, not just about them. Now I'm going to take a look at the sinks for a second. We talked a little bit about what we could do to help out with some of these sinks, making sure we're supporting things that plant trees or even plant a tree in your own yard. I'm going to switch one of these cards to talk a little bit about something else. Instead of soil, I'm going to hold up, I'm going to put up the ocean. All right? It's low, right? The ocean is the world's largest sink. It absorbs more than half of the carbon dioxide that we put out. Part of that is because the ocean is full of so much algae, but a lot of it is just the water itself. Ocean water, all water, can absorb that carbon dioxide. Now some of that is really, really helpful. Who here is a big fan of coral reefs? Who likes corals? Great. So corals use the carbon that's in the water to make those amazing shapes, those coral skeletons. But if there's too much carbon dioxide in their water, their water starts to get a little bit too acidic, kind of like we've added a little bit too much lemon juice to our water. And if we do that, we can end up with a situation where it's a little harder for those corals to make those amazing shapes. So a little bit of carbon dioxide in our water, thumbs up for the corals, but too much and it starts to be a bit of a problem. So if there are things that we can do to help reduce how much is going out there, we can help out. There's also a couple of other cool things we can do to help those animals that are in the ocean. Now, who here lives anywhere near the ocean? <laughs> Not nearly, right? 
Now, I happen to live near the ocean because I'm here in Massachusetts. But most people, when they think about the ocean, it's really far away. But who here lives near a river or a lake? Yeah. yeah, we all live near rivers and lakes, right? They may be somewhat farther away if you're living in a desert, but you still have some water that runs through your area. And all of that water eventually ends up in the ocean. Eventually. It might take a while, depending on how far it has to go. But all that water ends up in the ocean. So everything that we do on land can help the animals in the ocean or can hurt them. So there are things we can do on land to help out. Who here has a lawn or a garden? A few folks have lawns and gardens. So when we take care of our lawns and gardens, we like to add fertilizer to them, right? Well, fertilizer is actually, the production of fertilizer is actually another source of carbon dioxide. And it can be a problem for some of these other sinks. So if we use a little bit less, or use it at the right time of year, and you can find out for your area what the right time of year is, even if we live miles and miles from the ocean, we can help out those ocean animals. So we've got our sinks over here and our sources over here. These are things that we can do something about as individuals and as a society. Like some of those ideas, other people have other ideas of things that you can do or that maybe your town or city can do to help with some of these things. I'm seeing some hands in there. Oh, I think looks like I'm seeing some hands at Learn Charter. So we wanna get that kid near a microphone. Stop pollution. Yeah, well, there are lots of different kinds of pollution, right? And we can make sure that we're being really good about where things go, that they're going the right place not down the drain or um, things like that. Make sure that your town or your city has the right way to collect things like oil and gas and things like that from our houses, like if you change your oil in your, in your car, right? We can make sure that we've got proper methods to get rid of that stuff. <coughs> what else can we do? Yeah, let's see. It looks like there's some hands up at uh, Ace Academy as well. Not littering, definitely. These days, I think most people are pretty good about not littering, right? And the next step beyond that is making sure that when we do put our trash in the trash can and our recycling in the recycle bin, that those, that trash and that recycling covered up so it's not gonna blow away, and that it's transported safely and put in a good location. Because actually most of the trash that ends up in our water and in our oceans was thrown away, but maybe in a trash can that's open where the air can blow it around. So most of the litter, if you ever go to the beach, even the beach on a lake or a river, that litter probably wasn't dropped there by rude people dropping litter on the beach. It might have blown there from somewhere else. So we can make sure that we're keeping things in their proper place. Another way to deal with that is to make sure there's less trash in the first place. Who here likes to use reusable things, like a reusable water bottle, reusable grocery bags, reusable lunch box? Anybody do those? Those are fantastic things. So it means we're making less trash in the first place to have to deal with later. Fantastic. Any other ideas, things that you can do or that your city or town can do? We can not have that many factories. We cannot have, sorry, I didn't quite hear the last part of that. We can have less factories. Less, I'm sorry, it's, it's hard to hear across the... We can have less factories. Less factories, absolutely. Now, factories are also really important because there are a lot of people's jobs. Maybe we can hear of fewer factories or make sure the factories we do have are following all the proper laws and making sure they have the cleanest possible practices. So the stuff we need is being produced in a way that doesn't hurt the earth around it. Because we still do need stuff, right? But maybe we can use it in a way or make it in a way that doesn't hurt the earth around us when we're doing it. Any other ideas? There's, these are some really great ideas. You guys see a hand over at Ace Academy. You wanna get near a mic there? 
Oh, you got a hand at, at uh, Learn Charter. Stop chopping down forests. Right. The rainforest, we said that our forests are a big sink, right? They're absorbing a lot of our carbon dioxide. So we can help protect those rainforests by making sure that we're buying things from companies that don't chop down the forests and that we're putting pressure on people to make sure that that's something we think is really important and that we're protecting as part of our planet. Has anyone here ever been to a rainforest? They're pretty amazing. They're full of life. So it's something we can definitely protect on our planet, even if we live miles and miles and miles away from the rainforest and might not ever get to visit them. So if you do get a chance, I recommend it. They're pretty amazing. Right. I think we're starting to wind down. Does anyone have any final questions for me, either about what we've been talking about or other things that we've, we're learning about today? Looks like I'm seeing, seeing some hands at Learn Charter. Someone want to? Um, if, if less um, pollution, does, is, do pollution still go in the ocean? Absolutely. There's a lot of different sources of pollution, and some of them definitely still go in the ocean. But people are starting to learn to think more and more about how things get to the ocean and thinking about protecting our rivers and our lakes as a way of also protecting the ocean and the land that those rivers and lakes go through. So, And there's more and more people who are trying to be aware of making sure they're doing things in a clean way so that they're not releasing uh, pollution. And there are a lot of laws that are helping with that, too. So that's something that we can work on sort of as a whole group. It's hard to do one by one, but as a whole society, it's something that we can absolutely work towards, and it's already gotten a lot better. I've actually got a, a story here in Boston. Boston Harbor, which is right where the aquarium is, used to be one of the most polluted uh, places in America as far as the waterways. It's now so clean that on some of the Boston Harbor Islands, you can go swimming in the ocean, and it's totally safe. And that's because individual people decided this wasn't okay anymore. And they worked to make sure that all those sources of pollution were contained or were put up in, and treated in other ways so that we weren't adding to the pollution of that body of water. And eventually, it got cleaner. And now, kids today can go and swim in the ocean there when their parents couldn't. So it's actually a good story, and that's happening all over the country. And we can help out with that by making sure we're supporting the groups who are doing it, and we can also do things like cleanups and things like that to make sure we're doing our part to help clean up the pollution that's ending up in our waters. That looks like we've got another hand up at Learn Charter. Can, are humans a big source of carbon dioxide? We are a big source, not as much through what we breathe personally, but how we use our energy. So the more we learn how to use energy efficiently, so we're using less, or how to make it in ways like, just like you mentioned, sun power, wind power, water power, lots of other sources of power that can help us make our energy without adding to this big source of carbon dioxide. But you're absolutely right. We are a big source but we can also be a big part of the solution because of that. Any other hands up? Teachers here in the room, can you be my eyes to see if there are any other hands? Yeah, one more. One more. Three. Do carbon dioxide go into the water? Yes, carbon dioxide definitely goes into the water. It gets mixed in. And like I said earlier, some of it's really good, but too much can be a big problem. So, but water absorbs it really, really well. In fact, if you ever have seltzer water, what you're having is water with carbon dioxide in it, which is fine. It's a yummy thing to drink, but it shows how well carb water can take in that carbon dioxide. Yeah, it looks like we have a hand at Ace Academy as well. Sorry, can you repeat that? It's a little quiet. How much carbon dioxide does it need to make the world green? Like, 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 like. How much carbon dioxide is needed to make? Sorry. Like, oh, 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 oh. Any 
the ocean, how much carbon dioxide does it need to uh so or um uh, harm the coral How much does it need before it's a problem? It really depends on different parts of the ocean. Some places are more sensitive than others. But in some places, we're actually already starting to see some problems from how much carbon dioxide is getting into the ocean. Um, it, again, it depends. Some places are really sensitive and can get, and get changed a lot faster, and some places are less so. But we're actually already starting to see some of those problems, and it's something that we're definitely working on here at the aquarium, and I know a lot of other places are, are too. And that's part of the reason we're doing education like this. Okay. Okay. Well, all those things that you mentioned earlier, things that you can do, are things we call living blue. We talk about living blue instead of living green. Because the ocean, which is blue, covers more of the land or more of the, more of the planet than the land, which is green. So all those things that you mentioned are ways of living blue. And we really recommend you look into even more ways that you and maybe even your school can take on new things so that your school can live blue as well as a whole community. So thanks for all your questions, everybody. Thanks.